So when we ended the last episode, we were discussing how the seven levels of winning relate to agile software delivery. If you haven't watched that episode, make sure to go and take a look and come right back. So now let's continue the conversation. Let's imagine you are part of a, ba of a basketball team and the opposing team is going on a run and your coach and your team feels that if the momentum is not stopped, you are going to lose. The coach calls a timeout or maybe one of the players calls a timeout. You get together, you see what's going on, you have transparency into the scoreboard, you have transparency into the stats, you have transparency into what just happened in the game. And then you do some kind of an inspection. You ask yourself as a, as a set of team members, as coaches, is the game headed in the right direction? And if not, what changes can we make? And it's possible that when you look at the stats, you may realize that you need to be more aggressive in the offensive board, get more rebounds. Maybe you need to take get better care of the basketball, have fewer turnovers. Uh, you need to have more defensive rebounds or have fewer three-point shots or improve your shooting percentage. Whatever it is, in the timeout is when you engage in some kind of inspection and you make a decision as a team to do some kind of an adaptation. And then the coach, the referee blows the whistle and you go back into the game and you practice or you adapt whatever you discuss that you would in the timeout, okay? Whether you realize it or not, basketball teams are practicing empirical process control every time they get on the floor. They have transparency into how the game is being played. They, have, they see the scoreboard. They inspect and in every timeout and even on the court in between timeouts by communicating to each other and they make adaptations anytime they see that the game is starting to slip out of the hand or it's going in a direction that they don't want. It's also important to exercise this empiricism. These are the three pillars of empirical process control, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. It's also important to not lose sight of the bigger picture. If all you are trying to do is to win this interval, the kinds of decisions that you might take may be very short-sighted. You may win one interval or have one good run in the game, but you may exhaust your star player such that by the time you get to the fourth quarter, if your star player is exhausted, you may win the quarter or you may win an interval, but you may lose the game. So agile teams and basketball teams or sports teams at any given time they have to optimize in the current horizon, but they must never lose sight of the big picture. And some decisions that you take here can have a domino effect on your longer term goals. And how do you strike the right balance between thinking too far ahead and look, being too long term oriented versus being too short term oriented? That is the art and science and the craft of, of basketball and that is also the art and science of, and craft of agile software development. So here's my question to you. As you look at this picture in the context of seasons of basketball, and then you try and reflect on your context of software delivery, are you able to draw some parallels? If you are practicing agile software development or scrum, you may correlate this to the Agile planning onion. So, Agile teams are applying empirical process control and sipping soda, which is situational awareness, opportunistic discovery, and decisive action. Healthy Agile teams are sipping this kind of soda at multiple levels of thinking and multiple time horizons. At one level, it's like a timeout. If you're practicing scrum, this level is your daily scrum. You are looking at what happened in the last 24 hours uh, and what inspection and adaptation is needed in the next 24 hours. The next higher level is Maybe your sprint. This is about 
typically two to four weeks. At this level, you are looking at a cupcake of business value, a software which is like a cupcake that the customer can taste and give you feedback on whether or not it meets their needs. And then you're getting feedback to figure out what is the next cupcake that we need to make. The next level could be a release. This could be one to three months where you are delivering a bunch of integrated functionality to the market, you are observing how the market is reacting, how competitors are reacting, what is it doing for the revenue and the market share, and then based on all of that wisdom and all the learning which you did not have before, you're trying to figure out what should we do next. Your next level of, of empiricism, or the level at which you are sipping soda, is your product roadmap. This is usually 12 months. So you are looking forward and you're forecasting based on the market needs, what is likely to happen in the next few months? What kind of cupcakes are we going to release? Um, may happen, may not happen, depending on the dynamics of the market, but this is a, this is a forecast to manage expectations of, of your internal and external stakeholders. Well, the next higher level at which you might sip soda is your company strategy. Maybe your company strategy should last at least one or two years. If maybe it is a, it, it, it's a good opportunity to reflect to see if you can improve in that area. Um, and then finally, maybe these are the next higher level could be what are your business outcomes you want to accomplish the vision and mission of the company. Why does your company exist? Who do you exist to serve? The most important thing I want you to take away from this anecdote is the fact that whether you're playing the game of basketball or whether you're playing the game of software delivery, all teams must have a heightened sense of situational awareness at multiple levels, all the way from your daily scrum to the mission of your company and back. As your team is getting awareness of what is happening at all of these levels, you have transparency into what is going on. You are also constantly looking for opportunistic discovery. What new threats are emerging? What new opportunities are emerging? And finally, based on that inspection of the reality, your teams have to do constant adaptation. You have to, your teams have to take decisive action to exploit an opportunity or defend yourself against a threat. Whether you're playing basketball or you're developing software, your success, the probability of your success is directly proportional to the amount of soda your teams are sipping steadily. So here's my homework exercise for you. How can you apply what you learned in this episode to help your team increase sustainable value, decrease sustainable waste, and manage, sustainably manage risk exposure of your company. Try a small experiment, no more than two calendar weeks. Let me know how it goes. Until the next episode of Agilado, this is Ravi. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Hey guys, hope you liked my videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified of our new videos and new episodes. Share with your colleagues. Follow us on social media. So would you like fresh ideas on how to stay agile? Check out smoothapps.com. We've got our upcoming events and training. You can read our blog for free tools and techniques. And you can even schedule a free mentoring session with us. So until next time, Scrum on.